Hello and welcome to another episode of Short Sharp Schlocks, the YouTube show from the makers of Schlock Tactics, which is a bad movie podcast, but here we just look at new and current movies, whether they be good, bad or otherwise. My name is Ash and today I'm going to be talking to you about Midsummer, Ali Astor's uh, hotly anticipated follow-up to last year's Hereditary which was a very polarising film, and I think you're going to get much the same reaction uh, with this one as well. Uh, so the film stars Florence Pugh as Danny, Jack Rayner as Christian, uh, Will Poulter as Mark, and uh, a bunch of other uh, British people playing American kids for some reason. And um, the premise here is that uh, Danny, the main character here, is going through a hard time. She suffers a, a tragedy in the prologue of the film, and um, this leads her to sort of tag along with uh, her boyfriend, um, played by Jack Rayner, and um, a bunch of his friends as they go over to Sweden um, to uh, basically work on their thesis, their sort of anthropology uh, thesis. And uh, they end up staying with one of their student friends, Pelle, who is uh, Swedish and he is part of this community. Um, that lives in the middle of nowhere in Sweden and you can kind of see where this is going you know straight away starts off just being a little bit weird a little bit hippie-ish and then it all gets a lot weirder and uh, a lot more death cult and uh, yeah wicker man and all that sort of stuff and uh, uh, leads to one of the the more bizarre third acts of, of any film I've seen recently apart from maybe hereditary so um, you kind of know where you are I guess with Ari Aster that's really what I thought watching this film and thinking back on hereditary I didn't love it or hate it really it was just a sort of experience and I, I kind of feel the same about this one at times I thought this could be brilliant at and other times I thought this could be stupid and a bad movie. Um, but it never never led me to form a massive opinion either way. But I think perhaps uh, Ali Aster is just maybe way ahead of his time. Uh, a real um, unpredictable and kind of wild director that we're all trying to play catch up to. And obviously there are people that think Hereditary is, is, is amazing. And there'll be people that think this is a sort of a, a amazing, incredible film as well. But I would say I did like it. It did take me on a, on a wild ride. You know, the first two acts of the film, really atmospheric, just this, like, thick sense of dread, like you get in films like The Shining and Kill List and The Wicker Man and stuff like that, just this real uncomfortable tension sitting below the surface and, you know, really quite um, overpowering sense of dread. And then and the third act goes just kind of mad, like, like Hereditary did as well. You know, there were people in the cinema with me that were howling with laughter and, and not... I'm not sure that's the intention, but but I think it is Ali Aster's sort of aim to make films that are sort of wildly swinging between disturbing and, and absurd, uh, just really to to give you that kind of wild, insane experience, which which not many other people are doing at the moment. I mean, it, the direction in the film is is fantastic. I've never really been able to pinpoint cuts in films before but in this film like there were several cuts where it went from even night to day or, or from leaving one room and ending up in another sort of location you know where it's just like bang like either cut at exactly the right time or it will cut just before you sort of felt it would which in order to make you feel kind of more disoriented and that's kind of part of it as well I mean the characters in this film are taking um, mushrooms most of the time drinking special um, f Swedish folk tea with herbs and stuff like that so I mean there's there's some real subtle kind of um, CGI in this film as well which I really liked be, it'll be broad daylight most of the film is broad daylight which is which is really interesting as well and you'll maybe just see something in the background that's a little like wobbly or um, a flower might look like it's sort of undulating and you just as soon as you see it it's gone and you don't get to come back to it so it's just kind of bringing the um, the audience into the to the the acid trip of this film and making you feel a little bit woozy and a little bit kind of uncomfortable at the same time and I thought that was really great as well I mean, it's it's a question of whether you stay stay with this film through the third act, really. I think most people will enjoy the first two acts. A lot of those kind of um, killer cult films, you know, that, that sit in the shadow of The Wicker Man. And this film doesn't really, like, shy away from, from going for similar uh, things to, to The Wicker Man. You know, things are set on fire, things are sacrificed, there are weird dances, there are... Yeah, I thought Florence Pugh did a great job as the as the lead character here, as this sort of quite damaged and fragile, kind of emotionally fragile character. And then um, the really interesting thing is that Christian, her boyfriend, played by Jack Rayner, is is great because straight from the beginning of the film, you get the sense that he's kind of an asshole, and he's maybe the subtle villain of the film. 
if if not the the members of the cult, which are who are fairly sort of inoffensive on the whole, although the ceremonies can can get quite weird and and fatal in some cases. But I thought it was interesting that really the villain of the film was um, Danny's boyfriend Christian, who's sort of all the while is trying to sort of undermine her emotional state and um, not gaslight as such, but sort of um, you can tell he doesn't sort of love her and he doesn't want to help support her through all these sort of this tough time she's going through and that and that it all kind of boils to the to the surface then there's this whole conflict between christian and one of his colleagues when they both decide they're going to write a thesis on the same thing uh, but really christian is stealing the other guy's idea so uh, yeah he's a sort of un- underhanded kind of douchebag but the the tension rises between all the characters the more and more weird and freaky and the more and more drugs are taken there's some of the most insanely graphic uh, gore in this film as well that i think is all the more shocking because it happens in daylight as well i'm not sure if people in in the screening with me were ready uh, for that uh, midsummer it's it's be one of the more unique films of the year, one of the best films of the year, and it really takes you on a, a wild ride like uh, no other film I think will do this year. So Ari Aster is, is carving out quite the niche for himself as maybe a sort of a Stanley Kubrick, um, you know, John Borman, you know, these classic kind of psychedelic, druggy um, kind of directors. Ben Wheatley as well, Field in England, uh, I thought of a few times watching this as well. So, yeah, if you want to kind of, uh, if you like the cult, killer cult films, but all of the, all also the really kind of 70s style psychedelic druggy films, then uh, yeah, Midsummer's for you. And if you liked Hereditary and you sort of got through that and sort of weren't too um, put off by, by all the wackiness in the third act, then you probably will will stick through this one as well. And I think it's overall a more, a more cohesive, complete film than Hereditary as well. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Um, did you stick with this film all the way through to the third act? What did you think of the third act? Did you find it sort of too outrageous, uh, too absurd, or were you genuinely quite, quite uh, disturbed um, throughout the whole film? Let me know in the comments below what you think. And uh, yeah, do you think this is going to be one of the best films of the year, one of your favourite films of the year? Please let me know. Subscribe to the channel. You'll see every new video that I do release. I do these short videos every now and then when I see a new film. Whether that be in the cinema or Netflix or Shudder or anything like that. So, um, yeah, give us a like and a share if you wouldn't mind. Let me know what you thought. And yeah, that has been another episode of Short Sharp Schlocks. My name is Ben Ash, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Yes, I am. It's alive. It must be.